Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be talking about the blood nerve supply of the humerus along with the movements of the shoulder joint and finally the scapulohumeral rhythm. So let's talk first about the blood supply of the shoulder joint. The blood supply of shoulder joint is derived from the vessels that are running around the humerus. We remember in the surgical neck we had the anterior circumflex humeral which was anastomosing with the posterior circumflex humeral. Hence, this is supplying the posterior anterior circumflex humeral vessels are supplying the shoulder joint. Apart from this, we have the suprascapular and the subscapular vessels that give blood supply to the shoulder joint. What about the nerve supply? The nerve supply is derived according to Hilton's law. So what is Hilton's law? Hilton's law states that the muscle that is crossing a joint will share its nerve supply with the joint. Meaning, if we have the deltoid crossing over the shoulder joint, the nerve supply of the deltoid will also be supplying the joint that it is crossing. Hence, if the deltoid is being supplied by the axillary nerve, hence the nerve supply of the shoulder joint, number one is axillary nerve. Apart from this, there are other muscles that cross the shoulder joint. One of them being the supraspinatus and infraspinatus, hence the suprascapular nerve is also involved. And finally, the nerve supply of the biceps that, that were crossing the shoulder joint. And this was the musculocutaneous nerve. So this is the nerve supply and the blood supply of the, of the shoulder joint. Now let's talk about the scapulohumeral rhythm. Let's assume this is the scapula and this is the humerus bone. And this is the shoulder joint. The scapulohumeral rhythm is basically stating that it is not enough for just this joint to be taking part in performing movements that are overhead. Okay, so we know that basically abduction or any flexion of any sort that is occurring overhead, it is important for the entire limb to take a 180 degree a movement. It is not enough to carry out this movement just by the means of this joint. There has to be movement on other areas as well and that area is the scapula. It is not enough for the humerus to go overhead without the scapula moving as well. Hence, the scapulohumeral rhythm is stating that only glenohumeral joint cannot perform the 180 degree motion of the overhead abductions and flexions. The scapula has to move around the thoracic cage. It has to rotate upwards in order to carry out these overhead movements. So the scapulohumeral rhythm states that of the 180 degree movement, scapula takes part in the 180 degree motion till about 50 to 60 degrees. While the humerus or the glenohumeral joint, which is basically the shoulder joint, contributes to the overhead movement more than this, which is about 100 to 120 degrees. Hence, this becomes a ratio of 2 degrees motion to 1 degree motion. And that is what the scapulohumeral rhythm states. It states that the overall ratio of 2 degrees motion of shoulder to 1 degree of scapulothoracic motion is referred to as scapulohumeral rhythm for the overhead movements of the shoulder joint.